request to the chosen of our God as witnesses, and be able to grant it to him, ere he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one that they were given by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified that him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name.
As the first day of the week was dying, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the Lord. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the garden stuck and became like a dead man. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So he left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. Ran to tell his disciples. So he just met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. He knew that he 
could count on his mom to pray for him every day. Do any of you have a parent that prays for you every day, or are you a parent that prays for somebody every day? You pray for your kids every day. When my dad died, I too must confess that I was afraid. I knew that any time I needed it, I could just pick up the phone and call my dad. And he would offer words of love to me. Death demands our feelings, and fear is a very big feeling. It can even override our normal responses to life. Somebody once told me that we have like parts of our brain, and one part is the lizard part. Is this right? <laughs> Those of you who have said the brain, <laughs> like there's this lizard part of your brain that is like, it just goes right to like, the fear. Behavior. Is that true? It's true. Like when you're afraid, everything else cognitively stops, and that part of your brain overtakes. Okay. The gospel that we heard from today is the first gospel in the Bible. It's called Matthew. And the book of Matthew, the story of the gospel of Matthew, opens with a story of fear. It was clear that Mary was pregnant. And did not have a spouse. Joseph was engaged to Mary. And he had decided, I don't need none of this. I'm going to quietly let her go. And it's going to be all right. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Does anybody know where or how the angel appeared to Joseph? Good. You guys know your Bible. Good. He came. Have you ever had a visit in the name from someone? Okay. So an angel came and visited Joseph and said, Don't be afraid to take your hands in life. That's chapter one. Chapter two. Promise I'm going to go through all points in that. Chapter 28. The very next chapter uh, in that we have the Magi arriving at King Herod's place, in his house, and asking King Herod, Let me see the newborn cake. We saw the star that says that Israel is now having a At this, the Bible says, Matthew tells us, Herod was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. When mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? We know that. When King Herod is upset, thank you so much for that. When King Herod is upset, all of Jerusalem is upset. In fear, his reaction was to do something. Do you remember what Herod did when he found out? Yeah, he took all the babies. Everybody under two years old in the air in Bethlehem. Fear causes all kinds of weird stuff in this world. The end of the Gospel of Matthew is also filled with fear. The religious leaders were afraid that the disciples would go to the tomb and steal the body of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus said, on the third day, I'll rise again from the dead. So, of course, what are you going to have to have happen? Those disciples are going to go in that tomb and steal the body so that it looks like Jesus rose from the dead. So the religious leaders go to Pilate, and they convince Pilate to put a royal seal on the stone and to put an entire guard right there. So, interestingly, Matthew tells us that for fear of the angels, the guards shook and became like dead men. It must have been pretty mighty to have an earthquake and a lightning strike and the two of them. Fear is throughout this story. The women also leave the two with fear and joy. Both the angel and Jesus tell them not to be afraid. Most of us have experienced fear. Like, the kind that leaves us wondering, what is going to happen next? Death can bring this sensation on in real and powerful ways. And sometimes in our fear, we act and do things that we wouldn't normally do. Like the soldiers, we think, nothing can get me. I'm the biggest, baddest thing around. Like King Herod, we figure, hey, I'll just kill them. We're going to be trying to threaten my power. For those of us who are grieving, there are moments when we do stuff and think some things to ourselves, and then we wonder, why did I do that? What was I thinking? 
and families that go to loss can make horrible decisions. In fact, there's this room profession that we always tell people when somebody that you love dies, don't make any big decisions for how long? A year. We all heard that before, right? And sometimes we say things that really hurt when we're grieving. I think about Peter when Jesus was being questioned. In fear, Peter denies even knowing Jesus. And how about Judas? When he returns and he finds that when he sold out Jesus for the 30 silver pieces, he finds out Jesus isn't going to be this political guy that he thought he was going to be. He's not going to produce the kind of turnover that he thought. But rather, the arrest is coming, and then the crucifixion or execution of Jesus would happen. And in despair, Judas actually takes his own life. I see that death can lead to fear, to desperate acts, complete despair, and even more death. It's a spiral that sucks. It's horrible to watch happen. The death of Jesus disperses the disciples and his family. Fear does that. It causes people to run away. And it can cause people to rise up against one another. Nations rising up against one another. We have even seen fear divide our own country. We fear one another and it's destructive. Isn't this true? That our nation gets divided over a fear that the other side has a plan we don't like. We worry and we worry and we worry about this world and the church. Who's going to come after us in the church? And we worry about our families. Are they going to have to be able to make it through? That's what fear produces. A whole six form of fear and worry. Anybody feel that? Yeah. It's not a good thing to be rooted in that angst. God sends messengers from beginning to end to repeat these words. Do not be afraid. The angel tells Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary. The angel who rolls the stone away tells them, do not be afraid. Jesus tells the women, do not be afraid. So, how do we do that? How do we counteract what's so natural in the back of your brain that feels like it's the biggest feeling around? Well, I've been kind of talking to you over these weeks about taking a breath. That's something that I've learned about calming that brainstorm over. But the primary thing that you can do to stop all that fear and unrest and worry is to trust. Where there is trust, fear is its own. It's interesting to me that the angel invites the women to go inside the tomb to take a look. Go in and see. Find out. Notice Jesus is not here. He did not need the stone to be rolled away. The angel rolls the stone away, not to let Jesus out, but to let the witnesses in. Did you notice that? There was no Jesus leaving the stone rolling very long. How the heck did that happen? The angel tells the women that Jesus has gone ahead of them to Galilee, and they will see him there. So they can trust this good news. Or is it too good to be true? Jesus meets them on their way, and in their grief and in their shock, they fall to the ground and take hold of his feet. They're overwhelmed with emotion. And Jesus tells them, Do not be afraid. Go tell the others that I am God. And he tells them, Go to Galilee and you'll see me there. Can they believe the women? Can they trust this good news? Well, that part is not part of the lesson for this Sunday, so you'll have to come back next week and find that. All right, that's our mistake. Of course, their curiosity comes and gets the better of them, and they have to go and find out. Could it be? And still, that tells us that even at the moment where they're 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we enter into prayers, there was someone that came in from the line. Governor Rossi's mom fell in the cup and had stables and stickles in her head. So we will keep your mom in our prayers. There's a rose on the altar for the birth of Riley John Walker. From Derek and then for Derek and Leanne, uh, Riley's parents, uh, and for the grandparents. There is a prayer for Randy and Clark family who passed away last week, and the nephew of Carol Hayes. And prayers for Ruth Wolf, who is in the hospital in Georgia. And from Chris Huber, we're going to continue to keep Ron Carr and Mike Moore in our prayers. I want to add my brother Martin to Love and brother. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of you. We call your friends to witness your side. We give thanks for Dietrich Bonhoeffer and all theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim your gospel. Equip all to baptize, all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. Risen Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bring light and life throughout creation. The green blade rises, and all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards and orchards and those who plant them. Feed us with the fruits of creation. Risen Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of this world, especially those places where there may be conflict. That all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord in your mercy, your, you anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, care, and outreach. For this day, we lift before you the sick and the hospitalized, especially Peggy, Anita, and Joanne, Hannah, Karen, Cody, Trudy, Loie, Steve, Judy, Betzel, Debbie, the Holman family, Anna, Kathy, Marty, Jenny's mom and her sister, Marty and Paul, Ken, Judy, and her family, Bob and Maggie, and Gladys and Sonia, Jeff and Joey, Marie, Sonny, Lucy, Chris, and Brandy Clark's family, and Ruth, Ruth Wolf, and Ron Carr, and Mike Miller, and those who are listening for you in our house. And for all health care workers who care for them, risen Lord in your mercy, you have put gladness in our hearts, inspired musicians and dancers to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our assembly's song. Risen Lord in your, in your mercy, as you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. With your holy ones, we have your praises. And Lord, we lift before you now those who have gone before us. Free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoice in the victory of Christ's resurrection. We lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I think this week we're hugging, so if you don't want to pass around the peace of Christ. Don't be happy with your time. Those of you who are joining us online, I'm going to say, 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 I love you
times and all places, the parents and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. So, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, for the earth and the sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.